When I was in grade school, before we ate lunch, there was a moment of silence so that we could ask God to bless our food. And once a week, there was a Bible study, a trailer that came to our schoolyard. We'd go to the trailer and we'd learn Bible stories and songs. And every morning, we stood in the schoolyard. We put our hands over our hearts and we said the Pledge of Allegiance. We learned about the forming of the greatest nation on earth and the bloodshed it took to wash freedom across this country. We were taught to love God and country in our homes and in our schools. Then in 1963, along came the humanists, backed by the Superior Court. Our prayers offended them. They cited separation of church and state and demanded that prayer be stopped in public school. Well, offending people seemed the opposite of what our prayers were about. So we stopped praying in school. Then the Bible mobile offended them. Even though participation was completely voluntary, so we stopped studying the Bible in school. <coughs> we didn't know that that was the dawning of the demoralization American society. Then the allegiance to our flag stating one nation under God offended them. Some schools allowed children to opt out of that part of the pledge. Were they really offended? When did people become so weak in their own convictions that they perceive and take offense at everything around them? Have we really been reduced to a bunch of thin-skinned crybabies, or are we still a predominantly Christian nation? These are the questions facing us now. Who are the real victims here? Why does our Christian foundation offend them? The nation was founded on Christian principles. It's an undeniable fact. Is the simple act of praying really offensive to anyone? No, but the state couldn't compete with God for our devotion. And so they sought to diminish it and replace God in our hearts and our minds with big government. And so it began, the demoralization of a vastly moral society, slowly and surely. Our critics proclaim that all people of Muslim faith are not terrorists. I agree. Yet the same even-minded, fair individuals proclaim that Christians may be enemies of the state. I assure you, no one's faith will be tolerated if we continue on this course. Is there enough public morality left in American society to stop the subversion of our way of life? Does character even matter anymore? Does anyone remember the principles that formed this great nation so long ago? God proclaims, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Am I my brother's keeper? I am. My government is not. Most of Washington is so greedy and beholding to special interests, they've turned their backs on us. The very people that put them in office. They're so obsessed with their big contributors and their next election that they do not do the work we sent them there for. They reject our counsel. They ignore our demands. They deny we even exist. And then we re-elect them. We've been sleepwalking through the elections, and this dishonors the great nation under God that he gave us. In the first 126 words of the Declaration of Independence, you'll find five points that make up the American philosophy of government. Number one, there is a creator. Number two, the creator gives inalienable rights to man. Your rights do not come from government. They came from God. Number three, 
The Creator has a moral law that governs man. Number four, the government exists to protect those God-given rights. And number five, below those God-given rights, government rules by the consent of the governed. Now that is our American philosophy for government, as God gave it to our founding fathers. And we have an obligation to uphold that and, and defend it. God created free will. Even the angels said, no, 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 don't, don't do it. Don't give them authority over their own souls. They're weak. They'll mess it up. But God said, no. In the absence of genuine love from a free heart, it's at, the devotion would be meaningless. Absolutely meaningless. God exposed what we've forgotten, that man has absolutely no value absent free will. My grandmother used to say, God's in his heaven and all is right with the world. And she said it in good times and bad, it didn't matter. And I can remember once as a teenager, things were kind of bad for us. And she said, God's in his heaven and all is right with the world. And I said, Granny, don't you see what's going on around us? And she said, I see it, Janet Lorraine, because that's what she called Janet Lorraine. I see it, but we walk by faith, not by sight. That was her North Star. That's what kept her on course. It kept her on course, and she taught us to be guided by it. So I said to her, so you just believe everything's okay, and then it's fine, right? And she said, oh, no, because faith without works is dead. It's not the first time in our history that we who stand against them are the underdogs. We're battle-weary. We're taking unending fire. And some ask, why would you keep fighting such a hopeless battle? I'm sure they asked George Washington. We were told to occupy honorably until the master returns. I haven't seen him yet. I admit, sometimes I see those monsoon clouds coming in, and I pray that he's on one of them, but I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Back when Katrina hit our Gulf Coast, there was a story that went around. As the water was rising, a man in a boat went to his neighbor and said, Get in the boat. I'll take you to safety. And the man said, no, it's okay, God will save me. And so now he's on the second floor of his house, and water's rising, and a man comes by in a motorboat and says, get in, buddy, get in. I'll take you to higher ground. He says, no, that's okay, I'll, I'll be fine, God will save me. So now this man is on the roof of his house, and the water's at his ankles. And a helicopter comes over and throws down the line and says, buddy, buddy, grab the line. I'll take you to safety. And he says, it's okay, come on, God will save me. So he died. And he finds himself standing at the throne of God. Why, God, why? I had so much faith in you. I said, I sent you two boats and a helicopter. <laughs> we have to do something. That was the whole point of God giving free will. We have to exercise it. God's not going to do it for us. We're the stewards of our free will. Will we relinquish it again to a serpent in exchange for some pretty lives? You need to guard against these things. We have to guard against our own free will being lost, being given to someone who will have authority over us. Or we can just stand on our dead faith and do nothing and ask God, why, why? And we frequently do. Second Chronicles 7.14, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear them. I will forgive them 
and I will heal their land. So here's what's expected from us. Believe. Humble ourselves. Decide. And then act in reliance of God's promises. I want to close with the paraphrased words of Ronald Reagan to the Republican Convention for Barry Goldwater 45 years ago. Still apropos. Government cannot control the economy without controlling the people. The trouble with our liberal friends isn't that they're ignorant. They just know so much that's not so. We're here at a place many of us could never have imagined, facing a choice between fight and surrender. If we continue to back and retreat, eventually we'll have to face that final demand, the ultimatum. And what then? Better red than dead? Once we're properly weakened spiritually, morally, and economically, you think we're about there? We will have to choose whether we will live on our knees or die on our feet. Is free will completely wasted on us? Ronald Reagan believed our country was in a fight for its very continued existence. And we're still again in that fight. We must return the legislature of this great nation under God to its Christian roots. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we come today humbled by the truth that we know in our hearts, grateful for being a part of this great nation, grateful for the awesome heritage that we have that is so ignored, so overlooked, and so denied. We do humble ourselves before you and say, Father, enable us to speak the truth, whether to the masses or individuals, of our faith in you, our commitment to you, our love for this country, and our commitment to see it last and last and last. Give us the strength and the courage to occupy honorably until you return. And may the awesome truth and goodness of this nation be shown again around the world. In God we trust. In the name of Jesus, amen.